Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and we're going to be going over the tennis slate for today, August 28th, with the uh, all kinds of machinery and gardening going on in the background. And we're recording this and uh, doing it early because I do have to leave at about you know 10.30-ish, about a half hour before lock. So one thing we're not going to be able to see is the uh, reveal of the uniqueness and followed by the push-ups, but who knows, I might come back uh and and do a uh, follow-up video doing that analysis. I, I will owe those push-ups and I would rather get them out of the way early than have them pile on where I owe them twice tomorrow. A uh, couple of things. Uh, today is, is an interesting day because it is actually day one of the King of the Baseline competition where um, I already qualified. I have four entries um, and there are 100 entries total and round one, we just have to get in the top 50 which sounds nice, but the reality is that is not my strong suit. Um, cash games is something I've literally never played. The only time I play cash games or anything like it or in things like this, um, it's just not the way my, I don't say my mind works, but it's not the way my my software works. It's not the way my my approach works um, to just try to get the top 50. So I have, I have ideas. Um, I presume I'm going to just put in the four top projected lineups. Um, but before we get into that, I'm going to make a case, kind of like a no ball case, so to speak, that I probably shouldn't try to employ because it usually, these types of things usually backfire. But I will point out the following, that today um, at the US Open, which is in this area, it's going to be really hot. It's going to be 95 feel with a real feel of 100 uh, very humid. There's actually a warning to not do strenuous activities. Um, so not to mention uh, the possibility of thunderstorms later on in the day. So that, that you know, if you are the type that knows certain players have extra, extra good cardio um, or you know, extra bad cardio, right? It is, it, it is a time to take advantage of that in some way. And you might think that, well, this is what I would think, that, that that type of thing should be already factored into projections. All I'll say is this, all, all I will say is this, from what I've learned about projections and tennis projections, there's no way that that stuff is factored in. There's just no way. Um, anyway, so one of the things you can do to mess things up, in, in my opinion, is not be so ambitious about these big underdogs. And the reason I mention that is because from, from a human perspective, I mean, if you're losing to someone that you know you're going to lose to, and it's also like extremely hot and, and you're really tired, it, it might be, you know, you, people might make business decisions you know, and just kind of give up. The other thing though, is that, the possibility that players can retire mid-match also restricts the upside from the winner because you don't get that full uh, three, you know, three set bonus or you know the, the clean sweep bonus and things like that. You do get a, a sort of a bonus for you know the retirement bonus, but in GPPs specifically, you, you don't want that. Like if you're up six zero three zero, you don't want them to retire. You want them to take their punishment. And, get six owed um, some of the time. So both of those things, again, I, I hate to do this, but you, you might consider a middling build. You know, you might consider not playing the huge favorites with the big upsides yet at the same time, <laughs> you, you don't, maybe you don't want to play the big, huge underdogs. And I know I kind of spoke out of both sides of my mouth. Like on the one, on the one hand, uh, a player might just kind of give up and 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 you know let themselves lose or whatever. Yeah, but, um, but the the types of players that are are threatening to smash that are really popular could also be in, impacted by that retirement bonus thing. So I don't know. I, I think at the end of the day. I'm just going to ignore all that and just kind of just go with my project, my projections and my normal approach. But I, I feel remiss not at least bringing that up 
Maybe I was remiss in bringing that up because that is not my my strong suit. Nonetheless, far be it for me to resist the temptation to use the word remiss three times in the same two-minute session. Anyway, we have to make a couple of decisions. So with respect to GPPs, we have to decide what type of contest field to, to, to apply. And from the king of the baseline, we have to make a decision with respect to how to diversify, you know, should I put in, and I'm going to build these by the way, right now, let's build 54 just so we have them. Um, it should be 55 actually. Anyway, should I put in the top four projected lineups? Um, maybe should, should I put in the top four projected lineups, but, get a little bit worse by going min uniques more than one or, or excuse me for that matter. Should I just put in the, the, the top lineup four times? I, I even forgot about that. I mean, that, that is certainly an option. You know, it, it's actually really pays off nicely to have four entries in, in the, in the round two where all the money is made. So you can make the argument for that. So you have, this spectrum of 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 approaches, right? For the for the king of the baseline. You could either anywhere on the left side to putting four of the same lineups in, to all the way on the right side, have four lineups with, I guess, six min uniques, you know, have no reproducing players. Now, again, if you did that, if you were more to the right, you have a better chance of getting one in, right? To 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 the round two. And that's the end of it. Round two was like top 50 playoff for a hundred thousand or whatever. Um, but if you go all the way to the left and you, if you risk it and get all four through, right, you're either getting all four through or all four not through, then you're really in business. And then you could do stuff, you know, in, in the, in the round two. When I say do stuff, I mean, if, 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 you know, use an MMA thing. You know, if you, if you know one buddy's one guy's gonna be really popular, you could play both sides if you wanted to. You know, if, if all you're trying to do is like get that top heavy um, return, then you get four entries, just like any GPP, right? Four entries is is a lot better than one. Um, so maybe it's worth the risk of 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 going all in with one lineup. And I guess the answer to that is gonna depend on how the lineups look like if there was one lineup that is, you know, rates five points better than all the others, then I'll probably do that. But if you have like four lineups, the top four lineups are all projecting about, you know, one point from each other, then you probably shouldn't do that. And then if you have to say the top, I don't know, 20 lineups all within one point of each other, then maybe you should just, you know, go min uniques three or something and just try to get, uh, you know, maybe get lucky, get one or two in. All right. We're going to get to that in a second. All right. So we're building 5,000. We put our, our, our projections in or whatever. And again, this is just process. You can use whatever projections you want. The tennis projections are all the same pretty much. Um, so you want to do king of the baseline first? Well, who cares what you want? Uh, let's do, uh, King of the baseline first, I guess. So the first thing is is always a question is how, how to rank these things, right? So so the normal ranking system, as we mentioned, of the 5,000 lineups is the Sabre score thing where, you remember, you click on the eyeball and you said this formula that has the 95th percentile outcome of the lineup and minus 0.3 times the average ownership. But we don't care about that for this. All we care about is, is being in the top 50%. So... It doesn't have actually a cash build here. So you could, I think you just go to projected score. Okay. Um, and you just have the five top project, four top projected scores. And then you kind of take a look at them. Um, and it is going to be scary because you're going to get like, like this one's got T Maria. She's got 3,300. She's 3,300 or whatever. This one's got Roos 4,600. This has got my Brunzetti 3,500 and, so it's going to be very unlikely that you get six of six through if you play this way. 
So, I mean, I really did consider going with my my idea of really just Xing out or or at least you know prioritizing right, or non prioritizing the top of the range and the bottom of the range, right? These like T Maria who has, you know, her, her projection is what is like 12 or is it 20, but she has like downside of like two, you know? Um, I mean, all of these like Roos, I mean, all each of these lineups is going to have one bow wow in it. Okay. As a matter of fact, I mean, we have to go, pretty far down on the list to avoid having someone under under 5k for example so that's just going to be the way it is i think for 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 the king of the baseline um we could also go min uniques too and if we're going to do that let's again let's let's pull up our you know handy dandy average metric here but but what we have to do Ooh, it's got to be the average, not of the fifty, right? It's got to be the average of the, of the four. But we we could actually eyeball this, right? So okay, we're only doing four entries. So if we do nothing, <laughs> average projected score three forty nine, three forty nine, three forty nine, basically three. So they're all basically three forty nine. So to, let's go back to my my issue from before. As like how to do this. Well, I don't think that any lineup stands out with such a degree that we're supposed to put it in four times. Okay. So we're probably going to put in four different lineups. And it's just a question of how different we want them to be. You know, um, min uniques one, min uniques two. I thought of going min uniques two. Um, but that really I don't know. I I think that I I do want to respect the idea of getting as many lineups into that final as possible without having to rely on exactly one lineup to do that. So I think what I'm going to do is just is kind of split the difference here is go min uniques one and then and play these four lineups. Now, is this going to give me 100% of any player? I hope it doesn't, but if it does, I have to decide. Oh, I thought I was going to get all the Fritz. Um, looks as though three out of the four were Fritz. That's fine. What about Vichik? No. All right, so this is good. Casper Ruud is actually a really good play. He's going to show up in three out of the four. That's fine. So it looks as though I don't think anybody is showing up in all of these. What about Nakashima? Nope. So this is actually pretty good. So so what we're going to do is we're going to just save these into the king of the baseline and just kind of live with it. And again, we have a lot of freaking just all the lineups have one player, which is really 90% to lose. Okay. Um, But that's we don't care. <laughs> right? We're accessing really good plays because of that. And all we need to do is get, you know, is get top 50%. So we'll eat the the 15 points or something that you might get out of this T Maria or this a Rus or this, um, who else is this El Bronzetti or we have two with Rus. Uh, I guess that's fine. I have no particular issue with that. What about this one? So instead of the second Roos lineup, we go with the Comins, uh, the Comasana. You know, just again, this is the, this is the game we're playing, right? We're playing all these cheapos. Do we really want two of the lineups to have Roos, or maybe we could replace one of them with uh, Comasana? So to do that, we would take the second Roos lineup which would be Maria Roos and then this is the second let's get rid of this one and that's the second Maria one so we don't want that either 
So this one should be good. Now, does this give us four Nakashimas, though? Again, I really don't want 100% of anybody. Nakashima, if I can avoid it. Nakashima, Nakashima. So this is four Nakashimas. So what, what are we trading? So if we play no Rus, if we play only, you know, one Rus, then we have to play four Nakashimas? This one. Oh, this is a Rinder Knitch. Right. This one could be good because this one is another one that's pretty good. That does not have Nakashima. All right. So this one's actually not bad. But this one has two under 5Ks. And this is asking for trouble. So we're probably just going to either keep those. This, so this is my choice. Keep this as is with the two Roos lineups or we go all in on Nakashima. Well, the good thing about going all in on Nakashima, let's just take a look at this, is that if we really need him to win, let's just see. Let's see when his when he plays. Nakashima plays at. Mm, let's see. When does Nakashima play? 12 15. So that's not really going to help because we can't hedge if you know what I mean. It's an early game. Um, so we'll probably keep the two roost lineups, I think, the way it is. Let's just see. When's the when's the roost match? That's not that's eleven. That's right off the bat. So we'll we'll lose right away, I think. We won't lose right away. It's a tough question. maybe I should just go on a Nakashima. What's his win odds? Nakashima. Is seventy seven percent to win at ninety one hundred? Um, that's fine, I guess. So three quarters of the time, we're going to be very happy, but twenty five percent of the time, we have a ninety one hundred hour guy go down. That's 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 not good. I think we're going to keep it the way it is with the two ruses. I think we're going to keep it the way it is with the two Russes. So we're going to have Maria. We're just looking at the cheapos. Maria, Rus, Bronzetti. Oh, we got rid of, rid of the other one. This one's got Kinsena. All right, we'll go on all in on, on, on Nakashima. I mean, what we could do, so let's do this. So let's we'll save this one. Save these. I think this is fine. Let's put these in. And then if I really want to, well, let's go to my sheets here. These are like my projections, and I'll just take a look and see like who would be the next person like to replace him. I mean, he's he's 9,100. He's like the only guy in that range. You know, that when you go down 200, you, you lose four points of projection value, you know? So I, I think that, and I think he's going to be popular, which is, which is kind of good, you know? So if he loses, then other people lose. I think this is fine. So we're all in on Nakashima in the King of the Baseline. That's the that's the that's the the end result of that discussion. All right, so let's get to the fun part. Let's get to the GPP. Again, we built the five thousand lineups, but ooh, we 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 took that one and we put it in the garbage. Um, where was the garbage? Well, we don't care too much about that lineup anyway because, well, we sh should probably run these again. But I, I really don't feel like it. Ugh, you know what? I should just run them again. All right. So let's let's run them again. So fifty four five thousand again. Sorry, you could you could you could you could skip um, through this if you want. But I'm just gonna do it all over again. And yeah, I could actually pause the recording. Oh, how good am I? All right, I'm gonna do that. I'll be back in a second. Okay, so we built the 5,000 lineups. Sorry about that. 
And let's take a look and see. Again, we don't we don't care who we have here. But actually, since I'm putting this out after lock, um, it doesn't really matter. So let's take a look. Um Okay, so you, okay, there's our old friend. <laughs> so Brandon Nakashima would have 53% uh, of the exposure, even in GPPs, um, followed by Greek Spur, um, uh, Humbert, and Fritz. Boy, I thought that Fritz would get would be much higher owned. So here's a question again: is is what to what field to use as our contest field? Um, and again, the, the the typical choices are going to be either using the flagship MME field, which is what Sabersim kind of pre-loads and within the Big Apple, the high stakes, the, uh, you know, the, the 20 max, or whether you want to sim your lineups against your own lineups, like sim your top 50 against, you know, the, the, the this whole 5,000. Um, or actually you're simming your 5,000 against your 5,000 and coming up with the top 50. Um, which which field is a better representation of what the field is actually going to do? And that's, that's, that's what DFS is, is figuring that out or attempting to figure that out. So let's take a look at, at some of our options here. So let's first look at what the, um, at what, uh, Saber Sim kind of provides for you. So within contests, field lineups, let's look at flagship MME first. And we figured this out yesterday live that if you want to look at the exposures, um, you just expand the player section and it'll show you how this breaks down. So it's showing 25% Fritz, 25% Djokovic. It, it, it looks like very, very spread out, you know? Um, it doesn't really seem to take any stands on anybody. And that usually is not the way it works. You know, there, there's just somebody or a couple of people that just kind of take on that ownership. So this might be fishy. Um, so if my build one, for example, has a better, you know, has more a more top heavy look to it, I'll probably go with that. Let's let's take a look. Let's go back to build five, which is ours. This, you know, and I didn't say build one, I'm at build five. And actually, this one is is it's not much different. I mean, really. I mean, as a matter of fact, this one is probably much poorer because it's um I think it really under projects like Taylor Fritz's ownership here. I think 14.7% of my pool, I mean, is this being, you know, my 5,000, I think this is a very poor representation actually of what the field is going to do. I think that we go back to it. I think flagship MME and this um, breakdown here, Is, is better. I mean, I would actually probably put Fritz even higher than this, but um, at least this, this, I think this is, I just think this is better than mine, than build five. So today, I'm probably going to go with this. Usually I've been going with my own builds, but again, I, I, I do these videos to help, you know, show you guys different options. And I, I literally don't know the answer each time. I mean, each time it looks different to me. So we're going to go this time with flagship MME as the, for that. And then let's take a look for the, for the, um. let's go back here. So contest Sims, the flagship MME. And what about for the big apple smash? Let, let's take a look and see what this, um, high stakes MME build looks like high stakes single entry. Is that what it was? High stakes, 20 max high stakes, 20 max. Let's see what this looks like as a contest feel for that tournament. 
You see, this this is what I think. You know, this is almost what I would expect from the from the flagship. I mean, to that point, I actually think that this is better than flagship MME because it at least gives Taylor Fritz this 48% exposure, which I don't know why I think this is such a thing, but uh, but I do think that he's going to be higher than 20, the 25. But I think Djokovic is probably going to be lower than the 40. Let's go back and let's let's see what the flagship MME again was. We're, we're just talking about the flagship MME. Um, I just don't see this being reasonable. I, I really don't. We, we're going to do something very, very strange. What we're going to do, we're going to use the high stakes 20 max, probably, as our flagship contest field. But let's take a look at this one. What is this high stakes MME one? This one's very similar to high stakes 20 max. So I think this one's all right. And now we get to a little a little bit of differentiation. I think that people that use Saber Sim, they might do the second approach, the secondary analysis. So maybe they will do the flagship 20 max or the high stakes 20 max since they're doing it anyway for the Big Apple. So maybe no one's going to do the high stakes MME thing because there is no high stakes MME today, really. So let's do that. That's the, okay. So this is what we're going to do. <laughs> All right. We're going to go back to build five. And for the contest sim, for the line painter, we are going to use actually high stakes MME. Save settings. And for Big Apple Smash, we are going to use high stakes 20 max. Now, the other thing I was thinking about is to do a sim for the qualifier. And a sim for the qualifier, I think, is is more likely to have something like I like again high stakes MME again. So, but the problem is I haven't really figured out what um what the uh the payout structure I should put in here. So, I know that fifty percent of the entries get paid, but but what is to first? What does that mean? Do you put 100% to first and everybody ties for first? Or do you put, you know what I mean? Like, Or or when you put a certain amount for first, it's automatically filtered down the the um, the, the, the prize pool. I mean, I think we're supposed to put 50%, maybe 50% for first and 50% paid? 100 contests? Let, let's see if I ran a sim. With this qualifier, what that would get, what, what that would give me. So, okay, we're all set. Big Apple Smash three thirty three. We're, we're using high stakes twenty max. In a, in a weird, you know, in a weird move, we're in the line painter. We're gonna use the, uh, we're gonna use the, um, the high stakes MME. And I think what I'm gonna do is consider using the Q. At, instead of those four lineups I mentioned before. Now, if I do that, I could actually publish this before lock, which which I think could be fun. I don't think anybody's really going to just look at this at 1030 and then base their lineups on that, are they? Well, I could also just not show what I have, which is what I usually do. Um, I have to leave in like 15 minutes. So what's the move? Well, let's run the sim. We we won't expose who we have first. And as that's going on, by the way, what we have to do is again this little this um we'll keep track of the aggregate, the uh the average projected score so that when we you know tweak the stuff, 
we could keep track. All right, so let's take a look first at the um at the line painter. We sort by risk adjusted ROI. Let's make sure it moves. Okay, so oh beautiful. So it moved. All right. Um and then so the average is 338.29. Let's crank up the min uniques here until it yells at me for being too low. 338, 337, uh, 335, right? So that moved down. So we'll go min uniques three. So I like I like this this whole idea actually. Um, so let's uh, save these. I really like this this build. Regardless of who's in it. You know what I mean? Um, then we go to the Apple Smash. And we could again, we could put in Minunix 3, Minunix 1, which doesn't, doesn't really matter. Okay. And and we'll just we'll just we'll just put in whatever. And then let's see what this king of the baseline thing um looks like if we run if we use the Q. I'm just very curious. We don't want we don't need to do min uniques three. Let's say we did min uniques one and we rated these as such. See, see, this is what we're getting. We're actually not getting any lineups with these thirty three hundred hour guys. Hmm. Indeed, huh? So we are, are a little bit of a quandary here. In, in addition to that, <laughs> we're getting no branded Nakashima at all. Yikes. Um, so what do we do, right? We've simmed. But again, first of all, the average projected score of these are much lower than the ones that we were dealing with before, right? Remember that? We go into straight, you know, just projected score. We're up to like 348, 349, you know, whatever those were. Where these others, when we simmed it, the average projected score is well is well below. But again, we we don't. The reason why is the the average score is well below, but the upside is there. We don't really need upside in the in the qualifier. However, it would be nice to not have the the quitters, like the thirty four hundred hour guys that may just really give up early. So this qualifier is starting to give me a little bit, little bit of agita here. What if I put a hundred percent for first? So it wouldn't be a hundred percent for first. What if I put a hundred percent of the entries paid? What would, what would that look like? Then I'm just curious. All right, so if we did 100% of the entries paid, what, what does that look like? I forget the Big Apple smash. Let's go back to the queue. And then it's the same deal. This is why I am no good at cash. I mean, I guess what I could and should do is put a couple in from the those cash builds and a couple in from these. And then kind of let that let that work. It's actually not the worst idea in the world, is it? Or is it? Probably is. Well, I'm like really super confused. So let's just take a look again. So if we, we did this setting, 100%, 100 to first, but 100% of the entries get paid. 
So why would it give me these types of lineups? Umberto, Musetti, Perry. And then if we did this one, 50% to first and 50% of the entries paid. It definitely wouldn't be, okay, it definitely wouldn't be 100% of the entries paid. That That's definitely not the case. So why don't we do this? 100% to first, but 50% of the entries paid. See what that does. Now, now Sabersim is really starting to get pissed. Um, it still is just not doing this stars and scrubs type thing. So we're 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 gonna hedge this out. This is really awful, but we're we're gonna do one of everything. This is a atrocious idea. But we're gonna do it anyway. So let's um, and this one's <laughs> going against the consenta. Ah, okay. So this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna do one of these. If I could just get to freaking round two, I know how to play. I just can't get to round two. And then that was a hundred percent to first, and fifty percent of the entries paid. This one will go fifty percent to first. And 50% of the entries paid. All right, let's let's get to that. Hold on. Okay, so let's uh that's this one. We're saving that in a CSV on the other screen. And then probably, is there one more sim we could do? What am I missing? I know you. some of you experts are out there saying, sheets, it's easy. Just do this. You know it's 50% of the entries paid, but it's not 50% to first. It's not 100% to first. It's something else. I just don't know what it is. So we're just going to do two from the sims, and then we're going to go back to just top projected score. And we're going to play two lineups, just our top two. Which are which are these guys? We're really going to play Maria. We're just going to eat it, right? Well, let's let's do this one first, okay? Because this one at least is a forty four hundred dollar. You know what I mean? Like she's only like. 4% to, to win, okay? This has Djokovic and Nagashima. This one has two under... Oh, so we don't need two under 5K. Uh, so let's 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 prioritize. Let's put... Let's use this one. Let's put this top one. And then and then what we'll do I just I just can't do the Maria. She's just so live for like six points. I just can't do it. Um at least Ricky maybe maybe he gets his serve going. Yeah, let's do that. All right, this this looks this looks fine. We'll just do the top one. Download. We'll save the CSV. So the, I really think it's very doubtful that all these get through. I mean, there's no way. I used completely different structures. So let's go back here. Edit entries. And then there's one last thing that we have to do. 
and that is do a, a geomean test. Okay, good. We just gotta do a geomean test for the um for the uh the, the the lottery here. All right, so let's go back to the uh where was it? <laughs> the Big Apple, no, 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 the line painter, risk adjusted ROI, right? Right. Um, so how many are in this tournament? Uh let's see. Line painter fifty eight eighty two. So in the geomean calculator, we put in fifty eight eighty two. For one dupe, twenty three point five. Um, I mean, we should be we should be golden here. I mean, look at all this. I I, I really can't imagine. I mean, if you really want to get super technical, we can go down to sixteen. I mean, I guess we could. I mean, you, they were all under sixteen anyway. So because that's the case, let let's let's go to sixteen. Well, what do we do? Oh, by the way, oh no, we were gonna go more min unique, sort of. So let's 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 do that. Let's 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 make sure we get greedy. Geo mean less than sixteen. It didn't really even change anything. And min uniques will go three thirty eight, three thirty eight, three. 38. I mean, so we're still, we're still, we're still cool here. And then it dropped. So perfect. All right. We'll go back up to here. Save to King of the Baseline. So we should be good with dupes in that tournament. Not worried about dupes in the Apple Smash. But I mean, we should probably double check it. But you know what? We have run out of time. So we are good. Uh, again, I'll probably come back up to check the push-ups a little bit later. And uh, again, hope that helped. And I still haven't decided whether I'm going to be posting this now or at 11. The only problem is, is that if I post it now, people are going to know exactly what I have in the King of the Baseline. So I guess I do have to post it at 11. Okay. Uh, sorry about that, but that I, that's just the way it has to be. Hopefully the process video was good enough. Um, and that's it.